the place I used to pray. I brushed away the debris from where I used to pray. It had been a while since a visit. I had let things get in the way. I cried, Lord, please forgive me at the place I used to pray. <clears throat> I'm sorry for being so busy and letting things keep me away. Once again, I found him at the place I used to pray. Sweet fellowship I had again in spite of letting things keep me away. He said, please come again and visit at the place you used to pray. I'll always meet you here if you don't let things keep you away. I'm glad he's always willing to meet with us. We just don't let things keep us away. We get real busy. A lot of times what we're busy with is not bad things. But they're things that keep us away. Right. We've got to have that alone time. Yes. Just us and him. Amen. That's highly needed. Have your Bibles this morning. Turn with us, if you would, book of Luke, chapter number 15. Look of Luke, chapter number 15 this morning. And I hope that you don't let the familiarity with the text keep you from listening what God would say to us out of this this morning. Not everybody already knows what's found in Luke chapter number 15, even before you get to the text. But I do want to try to see if the Lord would use this this morning in some way to be a help to us and maybe even work on us a little bit. Amen. Luke chapter number 15. If you can't enable, let's stand just for a moment as we read our text. And uh, I, I do feel like that I, I feel like I need to read the whole chapter. And uh, I hope that don't bother you. find myself apologizing a lot of times for reading a lot of text. I thought, how crazy is that? Yeah. Right. I mean, why should we apologize? This is what it's about anyhow. Amen. It's not our opinions and things Amen. of that nature. It's the Word of God that we need. And we should never apologize for reading too much Bible. Amen. Luke chapter number 15, beginning in verse number 1, the Bible said, Then drew near to him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. Ain't you glad that he did? Amen. Verse 3, And he spake this parable unto them, saying, I want you to notice verse number 3, He spake this parable. And then, then in my Bible, it's a red-lettered edition Bible, yeah. and, and starting in verse 4, it's red ink. The red ink continues through the rest of the chapter. That's right. That's He's right. given them this parable. There's three different things found in this one parable. Amen. We're going to find that he's going to deal with a lost sheep. He's going to deal with lost silver. And then he's going to deal with a lost son. So this is the context of the scripture. Verse 4, what man of you having a hundred sheep? If he lose one of them, doeth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it. And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise... Joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doeth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with righteous living. 
And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would have fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. He arose and came to his father, but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him had compassion, ran, fell on his neck, and kissed him. And the son said unto, the father, unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand, shoes on his feet. Bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it. Let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost in his found. They began to be merry. Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. He said unto him, Thy brother is come. Thy father hath killed the fatted calf because he has received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. He answered and said, to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee. Neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment. Yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed the fatted calf, or killed for him the fatted calf. When he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was me that we should make merry and be glad for this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness and mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Lord, I ask you now, Lord, for the next little bit, would you just please help us speak to our hearts and God, do what only God can do. We need you this morning. Lord, you know where everybody stands. You know the condition of the soul. Lord, you know the condition of our lives. And I pray that you would speak accordingly. Help me as I stand, Lord, touch me, give me strength. Lord, I pray that you give me liberty. And whatever's done and accomplished, we'll do our best, Lord, to thank you for it. Give you all the glory. Lord, for it's in Jesus' precious name we pray. And amen. Thank you. You can be seated. Keeping in mind the context of the Scripture and, and that these three things, this lost sheep, this lost silver and lost son, is all part of one pair. I do want to focus this morning, the Lord to help us, on that prodigal son this morning. Uh, he begins by saying there was a certain man that had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And it looks like without argument, the father then divided unto them his living. And then after a short period of time, said not many days, then that younger son took his journey into that far country. Yes. I began to think about this and I tried to play it out in my mind and I even tried to put myself in the shoes of that prodigal son. He goes down there to that far country and when he gets there, things are going real well. He's got his pocket full of money and usually as you've got your pocket full of money you're surrounded by so called friends oh, yeah. everything's going real good for a little while right. I mean maybe initially it all began to pan out just like he thought it would but maybe he didn't think far enough ahead Amen. because after a while the Bible then said he's wasted his substance with riotous living and then a famine comes into the land and he goes and joins himself with a citizen of that country. And the feller that he's joined himself with now sends him out to the swine to feed the swine. Right. I, I remember as a young boy, our, our neighbor, my great uncle, lived just next to us and he had a, he had a decent sized little farm. He always kept chickens and he kept a few cows 
I, I remember some things that happened around there that probably scarred me for life. I, I remember when they cut them chickens' heads off. Y'all ever seen that done before? I remember when that was, I was a little fella. And uh, they took, cut them chickens' heads off and they took them bodies of the chicken and put them in a 50-gallon barrel. And I remember Brother Billy Ray's a little old bitty feller barely able to peek over the edge of the top of that barrel. And I looked in there, I heard a racket, and I know they done cut their heads off. I looked over the, I know it's before lunch, I didn't mean that. Sorry about that. All right. uh, but I, I remember tiptoeing and looking over the top edge of that barrel. And I looked down that barrel, and these headless chickens are running around in the bottom of that barrel. About scarred me for life. Also remember his pig pen. He had, he had a pig pen there. I always kept a few hogs in that pig pen. That's right. And I never walked up to the pig pen and looked in there and didn't see that it's covered in mud. Yeah. Right. I'm talking about several inches right. of mud. Right. And then over next to the fence, there's a little gate there, and then a fence, he had a trough built. And uh, uh, in that trough, there was always what we called pig slop. Always, you remember that? Yes, sir. He would ask the neighbors, preacher, too, if they didn't care to keep their leftovers. Yeah. And they'd put those leftovers in a bucket. Now, there'd be a lot of liquid stuff, whether it be sired milk or grease or whatever it was, be in those buckets along with other things. And, and they would just take those buckets and they'd walk over to the pig pen and, I, and they'd pour those buckets in those troughs. Them pigs would come run. Mm -hmm. They they enjoyed the slop. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. I kindly pictured this, and and it don't look like that that this prodigal's feeding those pigs slop. It, it said the husks right. that the swine did eat, and I I've done a little study on that. Probably not intensive enough, but I, I just found that it's mainly what pigs ate in those days. And I, I got to thinking about that, though, and comparing it to my memories. And it almost looks to me like that this prodigal, I'm going to say something right here, don't miss it, a son of a father. Amen. It looks like this prodigal is about to be satisfied with the slop. Yeah. That's good. That's Amen. Good. I mean, that's what it looks like. He's about to settle for the slop when there's a table spread back home. I won't preach just a little while this morning. God help me on settling for the slop. Amen. I'm talking about the food or the husk that swine eat. This old boy now, he's gone down to this far country, wasting his substance with righteous living. All his friends are gone. Everything's turned upside down. It didn't happen like he thought it was going to happen. He don't have full pockets no more. As a matter of fact, they're empty. Amen. And, and his heart's broken. He goes out here, finds himself ready to feed these swine, and he's so hungry on the inside, he's about to get down and slop with the pigs. Settling. I'm going to give you a few things. Let's look just for a few minutes at this prodigal. I, I want to take a moment and look at him before he left home. Yeah. What would cause somebody to want to leave somewhere like he left? I mean, he's got everything you can imagine at home. Right. Everything he needs right. is there. It looks like from the text that daddy's wealthy. Right. Yes, at least for that day. Yes, sir. He's got servants. He's got a table spread. There's a fatted calf put up in the barn. I mean, everything. What would cause a young man to leave something like that and head down to the far country? I thought about this, Brother Joe. It looks to me like, now listen, it looks to me like that the presence of the Father no longer excited him. Yeah, oh, that's good. He wasn't excited about Dad being close by no more. I think my mind, my heart, when it comes to our churches, what would cause somebody to walk away from a Bible-believing, yeah. Bible-preaching church Amen. with people that love them, a pastor that loves them? Amen. What would cause somebody to want to walk away and, and go back to the world from which they came? 
I, I just had to tell myself, it looks like they're no longer satisfied with the presence of the Father. Right. Right. Amen. I, I know it happens to all of us from time to time, especially with the hustle and the rush that we're always in and the labors that we're trying to do. If we ain't real careful, being at the Father's house will become mundane to us. Right, right. We, we get used to it. Yeah. And, and God forbid, I don't know no other word to use, but it almost becomes boring to us. Well, it it's no longer exciting. And, and anymore, it seems like if we're not running the aisles and, and hanging off the lights and, right, right. And, and everything else, then it's just, it, right, it, it, it's no it. big deal. It's, 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 kindly, it's just kind of boring anymore. Go ahead. I'll tell you, if we ever get to a place where we're no longer excited about the presence of the Father. Right, we're soon going to be packing up and we're going to walk right. away from it and leave it if we ain't real well, careful. That's the truth. That's good. It looks like this young man's no longer excited about the presence of the Father. It also looks like that he's no longer satisfied with the provisions of the Father. Yeah, that's good. He's got everything he needs, but what he's got there at the Father's house ain't enough. Yeah. It's not satisfying his wants, it's not satisfying what he thinks he needs. Right. And he's got all he needs. Yes. If, if you're not satisfied with what you got at the Father's house, we'll probably, we'll probably see you be leaving before too much longer. Yeah. Boy, that's that's true. True. He wasn't satisfied with the provisions. It wasn't enough no more. Preacher, it's enough. It's a, it ought to be enough. It ought to be enough. But it wasn't enough for him. Yeah, that's right. The Father's presence wasn't enough. The Father's provision wasn't enough. He, he wanted to go somewhere else and oh. see what he could find. So I thought, I thought as he, he, he made his plans, listen to me, listen to me carefully, he left within his heart before he left within his feet. Yeah, that's right. I don't know how many more days he stayed around. The father's done divided. He's living between his boys. But he said not many days after. So there was a little while there that he stayed around. But I got news for you. Even before he asked for his portion, he had already left. Right. That's right. He done gone. He's already down there in his mind. He's already down there in his heart. He may be there in body. He may, may be there in physical form. But he's done gone. Right. Yeah. I know the crowd's not huge this morning, but God in heaven knows exactly who's going to be here today. And I wonder if there happened to be one here on this good Tuesday morning and camp meeting when a lot of the good folk are here. Uh, there's a good possibility, Brother Van, that there's somebody you, you hear physically, but your heart ain't in it. You, your mind really ain't here. You already wondering about other things and thinking about other things. And, and really deep down inside, you'd rather be somewhere else than where you are right now. You're not excited about the presence of the Father. You're not satisfied with the provisions of the Father. It's yeah. not enough for you. And you already left, but you're still here fishing. Help us, preacher. Amen. I wouldn't be surprised. Right. I'm sure our Sunday morning services are full of people that's there physically, but their heart ain't in it. They've done left mentally. They've done left spiritually. They're no longer excited about the presence of the Father, and they're no longer satisfied by the provisions. Doesn't go. Doesn't go. I'm telling you, unless God intervenes, we're going to lose that crowd. Most of them done made up their mind. As soon as I get a chance, I'm out of here. Yeah. We got young people, we got teenagers, all of our teenagers. You look up here at me just a minute. Boy, boy. I, I know right now some of you have to come. You're forced to be here today. Right. And in the back of some of them's mind, I know because I was a teenager one time. Right. In a way, it seems like yesterday. Right. In a way, it seemed like a lot longer. Amen. But I, I remember a time when, when I really didn't want to be there either. Right. You don't really pay much attention to the preacher anyhow. Your mind's wandering off on other things. And, right. and I'm going to be honest with you, some of that stuff's hard to stop, especially when you get to the court and age and this and that. Y'all with me? Yeah. Well, 
Your mind just stays off on other things and you really don't want to be in church. And at the first opportunity you're going to get, you're going to be out of here. You're going to go your way. You're going to get to do what you want to do. And you think it's going to be a whole lot better than what it is here. That's right. I don't know why God's got me preaching like this on a Tuesday morning. Right. But He does. And we're going to lose some of you because you're no longer excited about the presence of the Father. And you're no longer satisfied with the provisions of the Father. It ain't enough. It ain't enough. You've got something on the inside longing for something bigger and better. And you think it's going to be that when you get there. He done left. Day came, he's got a smile on his face. And he's packing up a little sack or something or another with maybe a little bit to eat and maybe a couple of chains of clothes. And he's already got his father's money folded up and put in his pocket. And man, he's excited about saying goodbye yeah. to yeah. the family and the father. Uh -huh. Adios. See you somewhere later. He hits the trail, headed to the far country. I was thinking about that far country. That's not what I want to preach on. But I got to thinking about that far country. I wonder how far it was. Uh, Let me say this. It don't have to be far in distance. Right. As soon as you leave the presence of the Father, right. you've gone a long ways. Amen. Right. Amen. That's right. You've gone a long ways. What about that far country? That far country is well advertised. Why do you want to go there? Yeah, that's right. He'd probably been hearing some of these buddies talking about it, building it up. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe there was billboards in the town yeah. advertising the casinos and the bars and everything down there at the far country. Oh, come and have a time of your life. Right. Maybe there was beer signs around. Maybe there was beer commercials on the television. Y'all with me? Yeah. Miller life. It's the high life. They advertise it to make it look real good. I wish one that I wish Anheuser Busch would do one commercial with a car wrapped around the tree and mom and daddy weeping outside the car as the paramedics pull a sheet over that boy or that boy. I wish they'd show something like that. No, they won't they won't show you the truth. They advertise it falsely. They make it look so good and so appealing. Try to suck our young people in. Yeah. Draw them in. He, he bound to hurt about it somewhere to make him want to take all of his father's inheritance and, and travel that far country. He's bound to hurt about it. It's a place of waste. It's a place of wild living. It's a place of want. It's a place without. It's a place with weariness. I'll say this, but it's a place with a way home. Amen. Right. Yeah. Amen. Let's, let's see if we can't get back in prodigal shoes for just a few minutes. He's headed down the road. He's excited about the life he has planned. Yes, sir. His plans. Yeah. Right. He's going to get to do what he wants to do now. Yeah. He's no longer under the influence or the control of dad. Mama's not mentioned, but surely good chance there was a mama in the picture as well. He's no longer under the thumb of mama, daddy, or any other authority. Right. He's going to do what he wants to do. Yeah. Amen. It's Tuesday morning. I don't Lord knows, I guess. So he gets down yonder to the far country and, and, and looks like he had a good time yeah. for a little while. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to tell you the truth this morning. There is pleasure in sin. Right. Yeah. Sure. Right. 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 There is. There sure is. The Bible tells us there is pleasure in sin. Right. But don't you leave out that last part. Right. Right. Before season. Right. Amen. He enjoyed his season. He found there was pleasure in sin. Right. Flesh likes it. Flesh enjoys it. Flesh longs for it. Listen, just because God saved you and didn't save your flesh, some right. of y'all's flesh is still having trouble with it. Right. Yeah. Want to go back to some of it. Right. Right. Be careful. Right. There is pleasure 
in sin. He's, in, he's living it up. He's enjoying things. But after a while, he gets to notice that uh, all that he had is beginning to dwindle. Right. I hope you have a little bit of sense to say, well, I better cut back just a little bit. I don't know if he did or not. I wasted his substance right to live. It looks like he didn't even look until it's gone. Yeah. I mean, he went through it quick. I'm telling you, you got, you got money, you're going to have some friends. Oh, yeah. They'll hang around you as long as you can drive them, pay for the gas, buy the beer. Yeah. They're going to like you. Right. Yeah. Listen to me. They're going to enjoy being around you as long as you've got. But as soon as you ain't got, they're going to leave you and find right. somebody else that does have it. Amen. It's going to happen. I know you don't want to listen to that and you're all interested in what that preacher's got to say this morning. Some of you done got your mind made up. And all the pleading and preaching ain't going to change your mind. Ain't going to change your heart. God forbid. You know what that means? That means you're going to have to learn the hard way. Yeah. Amen. Experience can be a devastating teacher. Oh, yes, sir. And scars are hard to get rid of. Amen. Amen. Be careful. He goes down there and he's living it up. And he, he starts noticing that the pocket's a little bit thinner than what it was. And then just before he even realized it, he ain't got nothing left. Brother John, don't you guess? It's good to see y'all here. Don't you guess, Brother John, he, he probably went to some of them buddies at first. Yeah. yeah. Hey, what do y'all want to do today? Well, I don't know. How much money you got? I, I, I'm out. I, I, I'm broke. I, we don't want to do nothing here. Yeah, right. 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 Well, what's he going to do? Now, all of a sudden, there's a famine in the land. Yes. That ain't no coincidence. That's right. You're going to encounter a famine when you get down there and you run out. Went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. Let me stop right here and say, you know what he could have done? You know what he could have done? When he ran out, he learned his lesson, he could have turned around and headed right back to the house. Right. But he did. He goes and joins himself a citizen of that country. Let me let me look at about four or five things, maybe six, real quickly, and then we'll be done. I want to take just a moment and look at his hurt. Can, can you see it? That boy, when he gets down there, especially after he's joined himself up with that citizen of that country, he's hurt. Yeah. Yes. 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 He's hurt. Yeah. He's hurt because he's experiencing the pains of shattered hopes. He didn't know it was going to be this way. Right. He didn't ever dream it'd end up this way. He's, he's hurt. I give him that. He's hurt. There's a lot of pain in the far country. Boy, there yes, is. If you want to go, you might as well get ready for it. There, there's pleasure, but there's pain. Boy, that's right. It's coming. Always comes after the pleasure. Right. That's right. right. Never fails. He's hurt. He's hurt because of shattered hopes, and he's, he's hurt because of forsaken friends. They've all left him. None of them that he, he might have, his brother said, under inspiration of the Holy Ghost, said that he wasted his substance with harlots. Right. right. So, you know, and I'm not going to get off color, but you know he met some girls down there. Yeah. It's plural too, harlots. Yeah. He, he met some girls. And, and you know, oh, you know what probably happened? Preacher? He probably laid beside one of them and said, as he kindly stroked her hair a little bit, and said, I love you. Yeah. And you know what she probably said? I love you too. Mm. Hey, mm. Happens a lot down there in the far coast. Right. Yeah, that's right. I love you. Oh, we got big plans. But as soon as he ran out, she ran out too. Amen. Yeah. Right. Amen. Did you get what I said? As soon as he ran out, she ran out. Yeah. Hurt. I thought she loved me. I thought she cared. Hurt. He 
He's hurt. Friends have forsaken him. He's hurt. But, but then I thought about this. The reason he's hurting is because of his heart. Yeah. His heart's breaking. It's going to happen a whole lot. It's going to happen around the Father's house, have a broken heart, but it's going to happen a lot more down in the far country. Right. You might as well get ready for it. <laughs> you want to go and spend your life down there, you're going to get your heart broke. That's right, brother. More than yeah. once. That's right. More than once. His heart's broken because of his failures. His heart's been beguiled because of his pride. His heart, let me give you this. Then the thought about his hindrance. You, you know what his biggest problem is for a little while? Still pride. That's right. I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning. Maybe you ain't left. You've been contemplating it. I hope, I hope there's a big red flag flying this morning. Begging Amen. you to stop. I hope the Holy Ghost will whisper in your ear, please don't go. I don't know what I'm, I don't know what God's doing, but he gets down there. And, I mean, when he lost everything, maybe he did think about going home. But you know what he said? I, I, I can't go home like this. Right? Yeah. I can't go home like this. This is what he probably thought. What's everybody going to think about me? Right. right. They going to know what I've been doing. They're going to know I failed. I couldn't make it. I'll go ahead and tell you, you can't make it without the Father. Right. right. You're right. going to fail. Amen. But he's embarrassed. Yeah. He's embarrassed. Yeah. He can't go home. So he's, he's, he's searching for every means of support, every means of ways that he can survive. Down there in the far country, he's gone and joined himself up, sits in that country, looking for a job. He said, I got a job for you. Would you take that bucket over there and go feed them pigs? Yeah. Yeah. He's embarrassed. I, I can't go home. What, what's everybody going to think? Hindrances. Then I thought about this. Then I see he's hungry. He's hungry. In more ways than one. Y'all with me? Right. Amen. I'm like Brother Mayo. It's a little quiet and that's all right with me. Yeah. He, he takes that bucket out there with, with that pig food. He goes out there and he opens the gate. And walks in and no doubt, listen to me, it looks like by this time he don't even have no shoes on his feet. Now, I know that was a statement. I know that was a symbol. But it looks like he may not even have no shoes on his feet. Right. He goes inside that gate, from Billy Ray, and you know what he stepped into oh, when he yeah. stepped in that pig oh, pen, don't you? Oh, yeah. I I'm talking about a few inches of mud, a few inches of muck, a few inches of mire, and he's awaiting through that stuff as he takes that bucket of pig food over there, and he takes, here comes them pigs are running. They know it's feeding time, and he turns that bucket up, pours, pours it in that trough right there, and here comes all them pigs, uh, and they're slapping it, lapping it up, and man, they something on the inside of him. He's so hungry. He's so empty. He's about to, ready to get down and start slopping with them pigs. Hungry. How many of you, saved or lost, has ever known that hunger, that emptiness on the inside? You're looking for something to satisfy it. And if it has to be the slop, then so be it. I'll get down and slop with pigs. He's about ready to. Hungry. Oh, so hungry. But there's a battle raging in his mind. <laughs> He's a little still small voice. Still there with him. Yeah. You could go home. Right. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. You could go home. Amen. You could come home. Yeah. I can't do that. What are they going to think? You could go home. That's right. Looks at that pig food. 
Maybe he's about to get ready to get down on his knees. And that little voice, one more time. I want you to go home. Huh. Amen. You, you've heard it a hundred times. I have too. I don't, I don't even know who to get, give credit for it. But you know what he did? He kicked the rail, dropped the pail, and hit the trail. Yeah. Yeah. Finally, he got to a point. He's so hungry, he didn't care what anybody else thought. He didn't care what daddy was going to say. He didn't care what his brother was going to say. He didn't care about all the father's servants and what they was going to think. He said, I'm going home. I'm going home. Then I, then I see his hope. He hopes that the father will at least allow him just to be a hired servant. Right. Maybe, maybe he'll at least give me a job. Maybe at least allow me into the presence where the servants stay and where the servants eat. It'd be better than this. And he's trying, he's trying to figure out what he's going to say. How am I going to say it? With the least amount of embarrassment, how am I going to do it? How am I going to say it? He's coming up with his plan. He's coming up with some ideals about what he's going to say. Going to ask for a job, basically. Lord, just let me, Father, let me be one of your hired servants. He's a he's a working on it as he's going back toward the house. But as he comes around the bend, when when the father's house will be in view, to his surprise, the father's been looking for him oh, boy. Amen. and longing for him Amen. the whole time yeah. waiting on him to come back home Amen. he comes around and here's what got me preacher I just sitting there thinking no doubt in my mind the muck the mire and the mud still between his toes And about that time, here comes the Father. Yes. Amen. Running. Y'all going to have to help me just a little bit right Come here. on now. The, the time of silence, we've got past that part. It, it's time for shouting right here. Amen. The Father came running before he ever got to the porch, yes. before he ever got to the house. The Father came running, and as the Father approaches, he hits his knees. Amen. Right. Mire and mud still between his toes. Right. And the Father fell on him and kissed him. Amen. Right. He's, trying to, he's trying to form his words. He's trying to confess. He's trying to ask. But thank God the Father has already forgiven. Well, Amen. The Father already forgave him before he even formed the words. Thank God. Amen. Fell on him and kissed him. Thank God. Said, go get a ring. Go get the best robe. Go get shoes. Put them on his feet. He's back, thank God, in the family. He don't have to stay with the servants. Thank God he had a blood right privilege to be back at the house at the table. Thank God. Amen. I know in its context, it's talking about a lost sheep and lost silver and lost son. But I'm telling you, we got some of our people that are saved by the grace of God that turn around and walk away from the Father, from the house of God because the Father no longer excited them and the provisions was no longer enough and they walked away. If not physically, they've done, done it in their heart. Right. Right. But you've got a blood right privilege Good now. you're a son or your daughter and you have a place still being set for you Amen. at the table you don't have to settle for the slop Amen. pull up a chair and take your yeah. rightful position yeah. back at the table he's still setting a place for you he's still spreading the table for you there's enough for you and I promise you this it will satisfy that hunger on the inside Right. Right. Amen. Amen. Slop won't do it. That's right. What the Father has at the house for you, Amen. it'll satisfy yeah. that hunger. Amen. Now, in spite of the preaching, 
There still may be somebody here. You probably didn't even have to pay attention. Yeah. Maybe you got just a little bit. If you just get anything, once you get this, if you do go away, some will. Uh, there's, there's quite a few teens in here right. on this Tuesday morning. Yeah. A lot of teens. Statistically speaking, some of you are gone. But we had a Christian school when I pastored. We ran it for quite a few years. We, we broke our backs trying to help some kids. And I think at the beginning, I had it in my mind that we was going to rescue them all. We was going to get them all to Jesus. We was going to change their lives. Do you know what I found? In spite of our efforts, in spite of our prayers, in spite of our pleading, in spite of our preaching, they some just ignored it. It ran off like water on a duck's back. And they went toward the world as soon as they got a chance. It happens in our churches too, not just Christian schools. Not just homes, not just good families. It happens. My heart's breaking. We, we've been around MKs. For the last 11, 12 years, we, we've loved on these MKs. And, and I'm talking about these are jewels. Y'all with me? Yeah. Yeah. Mom and dad has given their life to serve and they've sacrificed. And, and I've saw some, I saw some of the best MKs, missionaries kids. Some of the best ones. We spent summers with them. There's one right now in my mind. Yeah. We spent summer after summer, loved on them, done everything we could do, and had the best moms and dads and the best brothers and sisters. And they still went. Yeah. We watched as they walked off. Yeah. Yeah. We were pleading. Mom and daddy was pleading. Other preachers was pleading. Don't go! As they walked away, don't go! Please don't go! Mama was breaking. I'm telling you, Mama begged and Mama, please don't go. Mine done made up. There she went. Yeah. Spot of please. There she went. It can happen to the best of them. Right. right. It ain't always teenagers, church. I've saw mamas and daddies walk away too. Yeah, oh, that's, that's right. right. That's right. Amen. While somebody's hollering, maybe a broken wife, please don't go. Them little youngins, please don't go, daddy. Yeah. There they go. Mine done made up. Yeah. Some of them don't never make it back. That's right. Well, that's right. That's right. But some that do, never the same. You're right, preacher. Got so broken and scarred by what happened to them in the far country. Yes, sir. I don't know what God's doing, but if you're even thinking about it, I'm praying that somehow or another you can get back to a place where just being in the presence of the Father is enough to keep you at home. Amen. The provisions that you have between a loving mom and daddy or somebody else in your life that's taking care of you and what we find and what we have at church, I hope that's enough. Amen. What more do you need? You've got a God that loves you, preacher that loves you, family that loves you, yes. brothers and sisters in Christ that love you. I hope that's enough. What more do you want? No, preacher, I want the I want the excitement of what the world has. Don't go. Don't go. And if you've done left, that's possible. If you've done left, come back now. Yeah, amen. Now. <clears throat>
before you get the mud and the muck and the mire between your toes, come back now. Yes. Come back now. You don't have to settle for the slaughter. Amen. Come home today. Heads bowed and eyes are closed. I don't know your heart. Mr. Caitlin's coming to the piano. Just why don't you come and just sing that song you just sang, Miss Caitlin, if you will. It's hard. But God does and you do. So Brother Bill Racy, let me preach this morning. It's, it's just what I hadn't even thought about this. This first thing came into my heart. Settling for the slot. Lord know it, I guess. Let me ask this question first. To anybody and everybody, regardless of your age, regardless of your position, does the presence of the Father still excites you? Or have you lost the, as church, as, as camp meeting, has whatever has it lost its excitement to you? No longer thrills you. As the things of God become mundane to you, boring. Oh, that, now listen, that can happen. That can happen to a preacher. And if you feel like that's happening to you, y'all run this altar this morning. Say, God, help me to find excitement in the things of God again. Help me find excitement about my ministry that you put me into. Help me be thrilled about it again. I'm telling you, if you ain't careful, you'll run and rush and work so hard and it, you lose that excitement in it. And it, it'll almost just become a job to you. Listen to me. I, I remember we, we went to a it wasn't no big fancy meeting. It's something to do with the Christian school. So they were having classes or something for, to help people involved with Christian men education. We went to it. We took our teachers. And I don't know, it's a catchy little title to one of the classes. You could choose what class that you wanted to go to. Everybody else in our group chose to go a different direction. But there was one, for some reason, I thought, I'll, I'll go to this one and see what it's about. I went in there and they said, He's a young preacher, isn't he? I guess he's a preacher. And he taught on spiritual robots. How that a robot does well what it's programmed to do, but it does it without any feeling or emotion. He said, if you ain't real careful in ministry, you'll become no more than a Christian robot doing what you're programmed to do. You may do it well, but you're doing it without any feeling, no excitement, no emotion. I believe God rescued my ministry that day because I was no more than a spiritual robot. No emotion, no excitement. That can happen if you ain't careful. It can happen. It's the presence of the Father still exciting to you. It's the provision of the Father enough for you. You need something more. If it's not, you need to come. If you're here this morning, you've done, you've done made up your mind. As soon as you get a chance, I'm walking away. I'm going to do something else. I want to go somewhere else. I want to be something else. I want to do something else. All I do this morning is beg you not to go. Please don't go. Please don't. Please don't go. We love you. We want you to stay. Mom and Daddy loves you. They want you to stay. But greater than all of that, God of heaven loves you. Right. He wants you to stay. 
you know the father's heart was broken and that boy said give me the portion of goods that falleth to me broke his heart he knows he's leaving broke his heart I give you this and I'll get out of the way Lester Roloff used to have those homes those boys homes girls homes <coughs> There was a there's a family that came to him and wanted to meet with him one afternoon. They had a boy that was going wild. They had a teenager they, they were losing control of. And they thought if they could get him in one of his homes, it might save him. But Roloff met with him. He said, I'm gonna talk to him, I'm gonna meet with him. He did. He left, left mom and daddy out in the foyer and took that boy in the office and just sat down and talked with him a few minutes. They wasn't in there five minutes. They came out of the office. The roll off was shaking his head. He said, I can't do nothing for him. I can't help you. Mama, with tears running down her cheeks, said, why not? Why can't you do something for my boy? Here's what he said. He's not sick of his sin yet. He's not hungry enough yet. Sometimes it'll, it'll have to come to the point where you get sick of it, but it's just not yet. Keep in mind, this may be for a year or two, three or four years down the road. If you ever get to a point when you get sick of it, you get hungry enough, I just want to leave you with this. <laughs> you can always come home. Amen. If you've not done got yourself killed or something, you can come home. Please remember that. You can always come home. Right. There's a father looking for you. He's longing for you. He's watching you. Oh, yes. Just as soon as he sees you heading that direction, he'll come to you. Fall on you and kiss you. Welcome you home. Put a robe on you, ring on your finger, shoes on your feet. And he'll tell them, go, go kill fatty calf. Let's rejoice and celebrate. Just, just young people especially, my burden's on you this morning. Don't ever forget. If you did get out of genre, you can come home. But keep in mind, some never make it back. Some are still praying. If you need to come, I'd encourage you. Please. Please come. If you're seeing some red flags, just, this stuff just don't thrill you anymore. Better watch. Better watch. Moms and dads can see it in the kids sometimes. They may not have requested the portion of their goods. They may not have said, I'm leaving. A lot of times moms and dads can see it in the eyes of the kids. See it in the actions sometimes of the kids. And they know if God don't do so, they're fixing to leave. Mom and daddy know that. How much more does God know that? You see little warning signs. Mom and Daddy's heart's already breaking. God, please don't let them.